Now, what I'm going to ask you to do individually is to sign this so that I can have a record of all of you individually. In the meantime, who is who's the one who spoke to me? Me. <laughs> Repeat the name for me again. Stephanie Shanika. Stephanie Shanika. Okay. That's right. That's right. right. And in the meantime, can you just, whilst you are going to record, if you could just tell me individually your name, and you can remind me of which university or fraternity you represent, and what is the purpose. Yes, yeah, so introduction. My name is Deja Mackey. Thank you. And I'm going to have you tell him who we are as, a, we are. as a collective and why we're here. Why we're here. Right. From the University of Missouri yes. in the United States, and we're here to study Jamaican culture. We've been studying like the music of Bob Marley, mm -hmm. Marcus Garvey, things like that. Mm -hmm. Good. So the history, culture of um, Jamaica specifically. Okay. And I'm Stephanie Shanikon. I'm one of the professors on the trip mm -hmm. and um, just really excited to show the students the um, diversity of um, religious practices and belief systems right. um, in the black world. So. Right, and that is where we come in, really. Yes, definitely. And as you, although you mentioned specifically that you are studying Jamaican culture, mm -hmm. as an introductory remark, I'd like to tell you that this church is indigenously from Ethiopia. So it's Ethiopian Orthodox Tewaida Church, so it comes originally from Ethiopia. And it was against the background, precisely of what you have just said, that people want to have their own identity in terms of their religious beliefs. So this church came upon the invitation of a people, unlike all other Christian churches. This is unique in that respect. It came through the struggles, of course, people coming out of from the Gari movement, the Rastafari movement, the Ethiopian World Federation. But just to say that within that whole movement, there were a core of people who identified the Christian beliefs and practices of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church as their religion. There were different other beliefs that surrounded, but our main belief and practice is Christianity as it is enunciated and practiced by this church. So that is just a background. So most of what I'm going to tell you is concerning the church and its background is in accordance with its history and evolution from Ethiopia and its coming to Jamaica. So this church is really not a Jamaican church. It is really a church that belongs to Ethiopia and the people, some of us in Jamaica have embraced it as our own and become baptized members and clergy, eventually like myself. So the floor is open and you can raise whatever particular questions that you would like to make concerning your visit here. Sure. So maybe the first one, and then they all have great questions ready, but um, the first one would be, how is this church, um, its history, how is it specifically different from other Christian churches in Jamaica or um, around the world? Right, good question. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church, first and foremost, is a member, a founding member actually, from 1940 of the World Council of Churches, is also a member of the All African Conference of Churches, and regionally now in the Caribbean is a member of the Caribbean Conference of Churches, and locally it's a member of the Jamaica Council of Churches. In terms of Christian beliefs and practice, in many respects they are similarity with ourselves and the Roman Catholic, more so than even the Protestant churches, because the Roman Catholic administers the seven sacraments as we do, and also the veneration of the Mother of God is also practiced by them. So there are similarities, but the Orthodox family of churches to which we belong, and it is called the Oriental Orthodox churches, really constitute the two twin churches which are indigenous to Africa. The Coptic Orthodox Church are the, are the Egyptian Orthodox Church, and the Ethiopian Orthodox Church are sister churches. As a matter of fact, one of the unique historical fact about our church is that the patriarchate, or the center of administration used to be in Egypt for most of our history. 
it is only in 1959 that we obtained negotiation with our sister church autonomous in that we had our own patriarch in the person of Bune Basilius right through to the present patriarch you know, Bune Matthias so we have had, you know, the six patriarchs. So when people when we speak about six patriarchs, they say, how oh, can this church be so old? And I'm having only six patriarchs being in from 59. So we have to tell them that our, our church was twinned with the Coptic church in terms of administrative purposes and the fact that the patriarch of Alexandria was established in Egypt. And so that patriarch was the center for us until we obtained autonomy. So all the bishops used to be ordained from Egypt and sent to Ethiopia. But at, even at that same time, while bishops were being ordained, we had our own, what they call, Ichege, head administrator of the church in Ethiopia. But the interesting thing about our church, and we are proud to speak about, the history of our church goes back, primarily, when you read Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, 26 to the end, the baptism of the Ethiopian eunuch. We mark it there because we want to make the point that it is God who sent St. Philip the Evangelist, the Ethiopian eunuch. And the Ethiopian eunuch was baptized by St. Philip. And then because of the Ethiopian eunuch being a finance minister of, of Queen Candace of Ethiopia, from the top, Christianity was able to spread. But even before that, there were a scattered group of Christians. And when historians went to Ethiopia, they saw, you know, the, the tattoo at the cross in the foreheads and on the hands of many other people. There were a scattered group of Christians even before that. Because the fact is, Ethiopian Orthodox Church is the oldest Christian church. Because if mentioned enough, Philip and the eunuch is from about 34 AD, which was about a year after the ascension of Christ, to show you how early the origin of the church is. But sometimes you will read about Judeo Christianity. We have to go back to the fact that from the earliest times of the worship of one God, Ethiopia accepted that. So when you speak about the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, that is part of the history and unfolding of Ethiopia. And the fact that, although some Western, because of jealousy, do not accept, that two great symbols of the Bible, the Ark of the Covenant, which was a great symbol in the Old Testament, have been transferred to Ethiopia. And the cross of Christ, greater portion, is also in Ethiopia. So two great symbols of the Bible are actual repositories in Ethiopia. So I could go on and give a lot more introduction, but just to say that the Ethiopian Orthodox is a sister church and have communion with the Syrian Orthodox Church, the Indian Orthodox Church, the Armenian and of course the Egyptian. These are referred to as the Oriental family of Oriental Orthodox churches. And then you have the Greek and the Russian and the Romanian, which are referred to as the Eastern Orthodox churches. These two family of churches really are very close in their doctrine, teaching and practices and liturgical performances. But there is still a slight disagreement because at one time in church history there was a council of Chalcedon in 451 AD where the definition of nature of our Lord Jesus Christ caused a problem in its explication and proclamation so there was a division between these two families Eastern and the Oriental and that fact and that difference has not yet been reconciled however the Theological convergences and communications have led to communicate, which says that in faith, in practice, and in everything, we are really one, except for the fact that we have not yet reconciled in communion and fellowship. Because for us, the highest point of all union and agreement will be when we have shared the body and blood of Christ around the same altar. We have not reached there yet. But in everything else, in terms of your reading your literature, your theological explications, it is the same. Now, that is different, of course, in many respects, in both doctrine, in both order and practices from the Protestant churches. Because, believe you me, I'm going to just give one example. If people say they worship God and people say they believe in God, 
But sometimes when you listen carefully to the elaboration about that belief in God, it is fundamentally different from us. 